What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well out there. Today's video is all about practicing dynamics in your soloing, right? Not playing louder, playing soft, but more as if you have three solos in a song, for example, the one we're checking out today, Fire in the Mountain, how can you make story and combine those three solos, right? So that the song goes from here and slowly builds up to a super crescendo at the end of the third solo. So check it out. Cool. So like mentioned before, today's video is all about how we can implement dynamics into our solos, right? And the tune we're going to look at is Fire on the Mountain. I've done it before on the channel quite a bit, actually. <laughs> but it's a great example of you have three solo sections for the guitar, right? How can each solo be different, yet still tell a story so that solo number three is the huge crescendo moment, right? In this case, you can have the Qtron with the octave, distortion, whatever you want that is really the stadium rock solo that brings everything to an explosion, right? In that third solo. So the main idea for today's video is how can we have three different solos that connect to that big crescendo moment? So when practicing something like this, I I'm not really a fan of practicing with backing tracks on YouTube because there isn't really anywhere to go with that, which is why in my private lessons, I highly, highly encourage people to have the music in front of them lyric-wise, right? Because the reality is you know when the solos come. So when you're practicing... Fire, done fire on the mountain. You can go right into a solo section, right? Whether it's the first, second, or third. And that really makes you focus on staying on one area of the fretboard and then sort of combining to go to somewhere else, to somewhere else for the third solo crescendo moment, right? And you don't have to sing the songs. I mean, you can if you want, but playing by yourself so you can hear those chord changes and think in your head, how can I make this solo move along dynamic-wise? is very, very important. So before we get to the guitar playing part, let me just preface by saying this is much more of an advanced lesson because this requires really the most knowledge of the fretboard right? Literally moving from point A to point B up here on the, what is it, 19th fret of the high E string, right? How can we get there? And I've made videos before on the channel of uh, fretboard knowledge. So you haven't checked those out already, please do. So cool. Let's dive into it. <laughs> cool. So before we dive into the fun part of today's video, we should recognize this B Mixolydian scale, right? And really, everywhere we can play it. Lydian. Major scale with flat seven. A natural as opposed to A sharp. So now talking dynamics wise, the second step really is to identify our triads. We can do B, A, E, B, A, E, B, A, E, right? 
B A E. And within those triad shapes, we still have this same scale shape. Right, we have it there. And the octave right so we know where to play where if we're playing the chords we can play them so we have currently the most freedom on the fretboard so let's look at some soloing ideas now of how you could approach solos one two three right if we know the chord progression being Right, solo one, we can stick in this area between frets four and seven, for example. So let's try it out. Right? So we're still hitting these chord changes, but we're at a pretty low, maybe mid frequency wise, right? Right? And right there, I'm doing a little chromatic. C sharp, D, D sharp, landing on the third of that B. If you want, you can go lower. But the idea is almost like saying the most you can in a specific real estate on the guitar. Right? So that could be something like our first solo, working our way in the middle of the fretboard. Second solo, we can now combine these triads to around here. So now let's say we'll focus on frets seven through maybe 11 or 10, right? But we can still start from where we started before. So it can be something like this. Right? And as you can also hear and see, it became more busier, right? More notes were happening, more trills were happening, right? And 
the whole idea of it is solo number two can be the more advanced one, the more wow factor, right? And it's cool to combine it with solo one. So like before, start where solo one was. <laughs> higher solo number three right just to create more crescendo will sort of be like combining solo one and solo two we'll start in the middle of the fretboard like we did before maybe make our way up to above the 12th fret and at the very end crescendo to octave B on the 19th fret of the high E string. And that can be something like this. So there, I started where solo two left off. And really sort of aiming for the root, every phrase just one octave higher, right? on that very signature from the album, Garcia, biggest crescendo of the whole song. Right? You want you can go higher right so in essence, it's almost like creating a story in the sense that you have a beginning, middle, and an end. And in this case, the ending solo, solo number three, can be the highest point of the solo and 
the most energetic, right? Almost maybe the most show offy, if that's the word, right? Solo one brings the listener in, right? And ends in a way, cool. Verse number two is on the way. Verse number two happens, right? Second solo, cool, a little more busy. This is going somewhere, right? It's going up and then it comes back down for verse number three, right? Verse number three happens, solo number three, and you start and you build up, build up, build up to the point where you have really nowhere else to go and you're doing... Something like that, Tube Screamer on, Octave, Qtron, right? The ultimate high, the climax of the solo. So at the very end, you can look back at your performance of this song and say, it went up, came back down, a little higher, came back, and then went super high, Tube Screamer on, Stadium Rock solo. So that is how you can approach soloing and practicing this type of stuff to create dynamics in your soloing. Well, all right, guys, that is today's video on implementing dynamics into your solo technique, right? Really build the solo from beginning, middle, end. End of it, for example, in today, solo number three being the highest point of the solo. This is something that Garcia would do a lot. I mean, Jack Straw, China Rider, these huge dynamic moments where the song goes all the way up and then comes back down. It's incredible, right? It really makes your soloing tell a story, which is the most important part of, I guess, music. <laughs> so if you enjoyed today's video, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.